Well, welcome to a presentation being put on by both TEP Foundation and the 1910 Foundation concerning uh, how to be a gentleman in the, in the modern age. Uh, this presentation was originally created uh, as part of the pledge training program for UNC Wilmington uh, to cover uh, a number of issues that I felt that uh, some of the undergraduates were deficient in, and quite frankly, some graduates might have been uh, proficient in. So uh, put, put this together, and it is based on a book uh, titled To the Manor Born, To the Manor's Bred. Uh, this particular uh, book is printed by the Hampton Sydney College in Kinston, Kingstown, Virginia. Uh, it's one of the oldest colleges in the United States and also one of only three remaining colleges that are all male. And their students uh, are required to uh, keep this book with them. That's why it is a paperback version, uh, fits into your hip pocket. And anyone who is interested in getting a free copy of it, if they contact me at the email address at the end of the presentation, uh, I'll be glad to see that you get it. It's a $5 value. So a little about myself. Um, I have been active on and off for a long period of time through uh, TEP National and locally through uh, the Rutgers Camden chapter, SIGEP, uh, as well as uh, fulfilling several roles uh, as alumni advisor to uh, uh, at least two of the colonies uh, that we've had over the years, uh, Towson and UNC Wilmington. Now for the uh, real definition of what are manners in etiquette. They're not just stuffy old fashioned ideas and thoughts. They are knowing what to do and how to do it in polite company. It will allow you to know what to do and when to do it. It shows that you are a gentleman, that you are an example of putting your best foot forward, that they are simply the right thing to do and they can change with times, but the basics still remain the same. Again, this is not meant to be a exhaustive uh, study on the subject. This is, this is just to give you some ideas. Um, they, there are a number of publications, which we will discuss a little later on. Uh, if you want to go into more details, of course, your little uh, pocketbook here uh, covers uh, a lot of the things that we're going to be covering uh, in this presentation. A thank you note is always appropriate, and that doesn't mean a hallmark one. Uh, now, I have as an example here uh, of a pack of thank you notes, uh, six cards. Uh, they can be picked up at uh, Dollar General, cost $1 for six cards. And actually, these are hallmark cards. It's a product line that they have called Expressions which is their discount uh, version of uh, cards. They also carry greeting cards and so forth for $1, uh, which is uh, a lot more affordable than going into a regular Hallmark store and paying four or five or $6 for a greeting card. <sighs> Thank you note is always appropriate, but informal. Respect has never gone out of style knowing what to do and how to act in social settings, weddings, funerals, dinner parties, etc., cetera, uh, is all the more important because you're trying to show the people around you that you are mature and you know what you're doing and how to act in a polite company. Always be punctual. Uh, there is nothing more annoying than people arriving at uh, what used to be referred to as socially late, especially if it's something like a dinner party where uh, people are expected to sit down at a certain time for a meal that might've taken hours to prepare. 
uh, the old saying is punctuality is the privilege of princes. If you're not a prince, you have to be punctual. Dress and act for the occasion. Uh, if you're going to a banquet, you do not wear torn jeans and a flannel shirt like you're, you're going out to a barbecue in a field. Make eye contact with people, speak up and engage. And, and the whole art of uh, small talk and uh, asking questions and following up on the questions is very important, not only in your personal life, but also uh, when you get out into the business world. When it comes to informal note cards, uh, again, here's an example here, but you can go to the point of, uh, and they, they never age or go out of style, is your own uh, personal stationery and your own personal note card. Um, it's far more impressive when it's sent. Uh, it also uh, allows you, since it is blank inside, to express whatever feelings and thoughts you might think are appropriate as compared to going and buying a pre-printed card with a pre-printed message in it, and then just signing the bottom of it and sending it. When it comes, if you want to have it personalized, uh, you, you can have the, the generic, just thank you card, uh, or you can have your own stationery. Uh, and that is usually printed with your name and some sort of styling on it. Uh, and it's considered either engraved or embossed. Now, nowadays, people don't really know the difference between the two. They both appear the same. And when you run your fingers over it, the letter, lettering is raised. Uh, but people are far more impressed to receive something like that with a personal message inside than it is with a pre-printed uh, exterior of a card, uh, like I said, from Hallmark. Once the note is written, you fold it over so only the name appears uh, on the outside of the car. Since it is a personal statement, the usual format for a business letter is not used, but something more informal, but still respecting the social standing of the recipient. And what I've included here is a uh, example of someone who has recently attended a, a dinner party at uh, their girlfriend's house and addressing it to the hosts and hostesses uh, of the party. Timeliness is very important. A note should be sent out ASAP no later than three days after the event or occasion. The note should be sent immediately after receiving and opening a gift. Uh, this is particularly important uh, on birthdays, uh, a lot of you will be experiencing graduation, receiving graduation gifts. Very important that you recognize it as soon as possible. Uh, if you happen to be a recipient of an award or scholarship, you should thank the people who are giving it, whether it's a foundation, whether it is a, a committee from your university or even your fraternity. Um, this shows that A, uh, you've received the word, you've received, if it's monetary, you've received the check, and also it shows your appreciation of having been considered for it in the first place. Notes are appropriate after job interviews as thank yous and follow-ups. Uh, I, as an antidotal uh, case, uh, at my place of employment, we have uh, interns that come through one uh, for an entire month that are shown the operations and participate in it. And afterwards, uh, it's not the least bit unusual that the uh, managing pharmacist, since it is a, a type of pharmacy, receives a handwritten thank you note for the time and effort that they put into training this person and showing them and evaluating them for their internship. No paper is appropriate for leaving tips uh, in your room at a hotel. People have tended to forget about this. If you stay more than one night in a hotel, 
uh, it's expected that you should leave a tip of some sort, depending on the cost of the hotel, of five or ten dollars uh, for the uh, uh, room service and cleaning up the room and so forth. Now, even a lot of hotels have gotten away from uh, doing this on a daily basis. And if you're saying a week might only come one or two times during the week, uh, you find out what those days are and uh, you, you leave a tip in a note paper with a very short thank you, or if they did something special for you, like le left you an extra mint on the pillow, thanking them for doing that. Um, Note, uh, note cards can also, in blank note cards, can also be used in place of pre-printed RSVPs uh, for wedding invitations, et cetera. When you receive an, inf an invitation, if in the bottom left-hand corner, you see the letters RSVP, which stands for the French of respondez-vous s'il vous plaît, which means respond if you please. It means that uh, you have to confirm that you will be attending the event or party or what have you if you're invited as a couple and for some reason uh, one, uh, the, uh, one member of the couple cannot attend, you, you would say, I'm happy to uh, uh, accept your invitation. Unfortunately, uh, Miss So-and-so uh, will be out of town and will not be able to attend. Uh, the, the, the most, the premier note paper, uh, printer in the United States is Crane and Company, which is also the same people who make the paper for the U.S. currency. Um, as I had discussed earlier, thermographic, which is, uh, embossing rather than engraving, uh, on your informal note paper as a return address, uh, can be used. Uh, and especially with addresses, since people live in apartments and move frequently, uh, you might even want to skip having a printed address, which is when you have it printed, it's either in the up, upper left hand corner or on the rear flap. But you might want to avoid doing that if you are, are going to be in an apartment and you know you're going to move every year or two and you just handwrite those things on the outside of the envelope. Uh, Never forget that you can never say thank you too much. On the other hand, unless you are saying I'm sorry in a condolence note, you have to stay uh, have to state this in person or in writing. The damage is already done. You are you are trying to minimize the damage. It's not a get out of jail free card. Uh, it's a recognition that what you did was. Uh, wrong or a faux pas, and uh, you, you're, you're expressing your sincere uh, feelings that you wish it didn't happen. Again, please and thank you have never gone out of style. As far as addressing people, this has gotten more complicated over the years. Sir and ma'am, depending on their rank, have never gone out of style. As time goes on, your social standing may change and you may be the one being addressed as sir. Uh, as an example, after being elected to city council at age 21, uh, whereas uh, neighbors and people in the neighborhood uh, where I grew up used to refer to me as John or Johnny, uh, in public started calling me Mr. Lindsay or his honor. Uh, a term I consider rather pretentious at this level, but nonetheless, it's acceptable. Uh, and this was being done by people who are much senior in my age. On the other hand, I could refer to people who were my seniors by age by their first name, unless they were so very old or of great social standing that it would be inappropriate. And as an example would be if uh, you were to get together with a uh, judge, you would refer to him as Judge So and So, although you might know, uh, you know, his first name and be familiar with him. It still would be inappropriate to refer to him uh, of a lesser standing other than his official title. These are axioms that never go out of style and are always appropriate. All brides are beautiful, all newborns are adorable, 
all children's performances are great, all pets are adorable, all ceremonies are wonderful, all recipients of awards are deserving. Be gracious in winning and magnanimous in losing. And thank you, thank you, and by the way, thank you. This next topic uh, is something that uh, if you're still in school, you can practice and you, you, some people are really good at it and some people are just wallflowers and aren't, but you really need, if you intend to socialize, especially after you get out of school where it's difficult meeting people and carrying on conversations, you need to uh, practice what is known as cocktail party talk. Um, find out a little about who's attending, uh, who they are, where they're from, what their interests might be. This, this is great for starting a uh, conversation with people. Um, as an example, uh, do you go to UNCW? How about Panthers, which is the Carolina football team? Uh, something about the person, they're wearing an unusual tie that might have some sort of significance uh, because uh, it has steam locomotives on it. They might be a, a railroad aficionado. Um, depending on if they're consuming something that's unusual or you know something about, you might want to strike up a topic on that, such as I see you like scotch, blended or single malted. Uh, and then you can go into a whole conversation if it's single malted, what type of single malted and you know, particular tastes that they have. Um, where they've been recently, if they've just come back from a trip, especially if it's the middle of winter and they come back with this great tan, you know, it's like, oh, You've been someplace warm or the Caribbean or something. Uh, again, it helps to know a little about the people who are attending the party uh, because then you have, you can just walk up to them and introduce yourself and say, oh, by the way, I understand you like NASCAR. So do I. Who's your favorite driver or, or something to that effect? When it comes to business parties uh, and dinners, um, even lunches, if you're going out with your, your boss or your boss's boss. The key word is business. Do not act or behave any differently than if you were in the business office. The people attending are not your tech brothers or pals. They are business associates and will use every social faux pas. Uh, again, if you've never heard of this term before, it comes from, it's a misstep in dance. It means uh, doing something that's inappropriate. Uh, faux pas against you as if you were in a regular office setting. If you feel that you cannot control your drinking, just stick to tonic water and a twist. It looks like a regular drink without having uh, the appearance, without having appear different from everyone else in the group who might be drinking. Uh, too many careers have died at the office Christmas party. And I can give you several stories, which I will not to uh, save the guilty parties of uh, outlandish things that have occurred that led to people being fired. A glass of champagne or a glass of wine with a meal to be sipped uh, should keep you safe both in your behavior and your drive home. Allow your host to set the tone for this. Uh, if your host is not even drinking anything, do not necessarily consume alcohol. Uh, they might have a particular uh, bias against it. They might be a recovering alcoholic themselves and it would make them feel uncomfortable to be with people who uh, are drinking around them. If you're the host and you are entertaining business clients, skip the drink for yourself altogether. Uh, you can say uh, when if uh, the waiter comes up or waitress comes up and asks, would you like something to drink? Uh, if you're not drinking alcohol and you have no problems about your guests drinking it, simply say, oh, I will have uh, tonic water with a twist, but uh, everyone here, you just order whatever you want. You know, it, it really doesn't matter. I'm just not going to be drinking tonight. Uh, you, you are there to do a job with the best of a clear head. Uh, you, you don't want to leave an impression on a client or uh, perhaps a work superior uh, that's not appropriate to the way you really are and what might come out of your mouth. 
this topic has uh, gotten very difficult over the years. Um, a lot of our discourse has turned into uh, shouting matches and uh, people acting as uh, immovable uh, in discussing something. You can discuss something uh, and have a different opinion and agree to disagree. Rhetoric is a long lost art form of being able to discuss a topic from either point of view in a civil, polite way that respects the other person's point of view. Actually, this is exactly the basis on the classic debating clubs uh, that used to exist in uh, high schools and colleges in that you were presented with the topic and you were expected to be well-versed on either side of the topic. So uh, it's how you present it that's the important thing. In business, fraternity, and in life, learn how to do this. You will not always get your way, but you shouldn't prove what a social ass you are in the process. To turn a phrase, time wounds all heals. Talking over someone or shouting them down proves nothing. Language is the apparel in which your thoughts parade before the public. Never, cl never clothe them in vulgar or shoddy attire. And unfortunately, too many people clothe their language like they were wearing pajamas to Walmart. Okay, let's get real. Many people do not use snail mail anymore, just as many people pay their bills without writing a paper check. While not as impactful, an email or text thank you can do the job, but it's not exactly that memorable. Uh, what, what I'm showing here on the right is a 43 year old thank you note, which is found in a scrapbook of the sorority at Rutgers Camden uh, that, uh, I sent on behalf of the Brotherhood uh, for attending their open house. And when the alumni got back together again, not too long ago and opened up the scrapbook, here it is. So it, it presents memories for many, many, many years. Uh, and especially if you're sending a thank you note, maybe to an elderly relative and so forth, it means a lot to them that you've taken the time and effort to do this. Everyday courtesies, answering messages sent by email, text, or letter as soon as possible. Studies have shown that most people expect a response uh, within an hour and a half of sending something, which is not always possible to do, especially if uh, it's a personal email and you don't check them till you get home, or if you're traveling and you don't have access to the internet. Uh, a lot of times, if you get something and it requires a long answer, you can simply text back saying, uh, I understand what you're asking. I don't have the time to go into details, but I will get back to you with uh, greater clarification within the next couple of days. A uh, person asking the question is doing so for a reason. It is rude not to show that person the respect of a timely reply. They're not just sending you this email because they thought it was a good idea. They're sending it because they, they need, if they are questioning something, they need information and their day is dependent upon how you respond. I'm sorry is not an excuse. It does not make everything better or right the wrong. Too many people view this as a get out of jail free card. It isn't. The best way to avoid saying I'm sorry is not to have committed the faux pas in the first place. So if you're going to send an email, if you're going to write a letter, sometimes it's better to write it, put it down and come back an hour later, half a day later and reread it and think uh, maybe this is not the tone that I really want to express my thoughts in. And you might start from scratch. Better that than an email sent in anger that you will regret the rest of your life. Money is not a replacement for a well thought out gift. If you have to resort to, uh, to giving money, get a gift card at a place where you know the person has special interest or hobby. But it's better to know that 
uh, this person likes certain things. They, they're an aficionado of tea or coffee and so forth. And you go out and buy a specialty tea or a group of specialty teas or, um, you know, coffees or whatever. Uh, it shows that you've given some thought in the gift, not an easy way out. Uh, it, it, particularly with chapters, uh, one of the roles of the secretary uh, should be to send thank you notes out on behalf of the membership. Uh, remember, you're representing that group, whether it's the national fraternity, whether it's your chapter, um, whether it's some other organization you're participating in. And uh, if someone has given something to them, or has gone out of their way, or has you know uh, come and paid you a visit, a uh, thank you note and indicating that uh, it was appreciated uh, put you in good stead. Uh, while I had also um, told you about the uh, book uh, to the manners born to the manners bred, uh, there are other hardback books uh, out there that that you can get if. You, you want to spend your money on. The only th exception I will make here uh, in this slide is that How to Be a Gentleman by John Bridges is no longer printed by uh, and carried by Brooks Brothers. You can get it online and you can get uh, used copies online. It's, it's, it's a very handy book to have, uh, but uh, Brooks Brothers no longer carries, uh, carries it itself. And of course, remember, be a gentleman at all times. Character, intelligence, strength, and style, this all makes a gentleman. And remember, uh, you belong to a fraternity that uh, not only has friendship and service, but chivalry as part of its goals. And you should reflect that. Uh, if you should want a copy of To the Manners Born, To the Manners Bred, um, if you contact the 1910 Foundation at this email address, we'll be glad to send it out to you uh, as soon as we get the request by usual mail. So we will need your physical address that we can send it to. And at that, uh, we have covered the, our a uh, very short version of how to be a gentleman. And uh, should you have any further questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you.